All right, welcome to another episode of Occult in Plain Sight. Today we're going to be talking about Star Wars, something that I have referenced before, but we're going to get a little bit more in depth with it today. So let's get into it. Are you ready for this? Now, I've always said that the creator of Star Wars, George Lucas, is a hell of a magician because who else do you know who has made more money for the least amount of work? Most of his immense wealth has come from his intellectual property of Star Wars and his company of Lucasfilm. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about the former. The reason Star Wars was such a big hit then and has been such a big flop now that it has been sold over to Disney is because Lucas based a lot of the original Star Wars on archetypes and mythos. You have the princess who's been captured by the evil villain as now the damsel in distress, needing to be rescued. The first time you see the evil villain, Darth Vader, you know that he's the villain just by looking at his outfit. There's the kid who's about to go on the hero's journey, who finds a mentor and an old wizard who's about to teach him the ways of the Force. And it's this idea of the Force that Lucas borrowed from Hermeticism and the occult most of all. There are a lot of space operas and sci-fi movies, but Star Wars stands apart from them with the inclusion of the Force and its powers, Jedi, Sith, lightsabers, and the classic good versus evil clash of polarity. And it's all done against the backdrop of a galactic civil war. The stakes couldn't be higher because literally everything's at stake. The fate of the galaxy hangs in the balance. So George Lucas uses a lot of polarity in Star Wars. It's the rebellion versus the galactic empire. It's the Jedi versus the Sith. And even polarity in size and scale. The very first scene of Star Wars, you have the huge Imperial Star Destroyer chasing the smaller rebel ship. And it works. It worked well enough for Star Wars to be a colossal hit back in 1977. And I hate to put a date on myself here, but I remember seeing the original Star Wars back in the theater as a kid, and I was absolutely blown away by it, because at the time we'd never seen anything like it. Because not only did Lucas borrow from all these archetypes and mythos and incorporate a lot of polarity into the movie, but he also innovated the special effects as well. They were state-of-the-art and considered groundbreaking. And this was well before the digital age. The practical and modeling effects that he used at the time were completely revolutionary. And as a kid seeing this, I was instantly a fan. And I've seen every Star Wars movie in the theater except for Solo. And that's including the new terrible trilogy. But we'll get to that in a bit. The true magic of Star Wars lies within the idea of the Force, which George Lucas borrowed from the hermetic principle of mentalism. The idea that there's this force that binds everything together, that's a part of everything. The principle of mentalism also states that we're all connected, that everything is part of the all. Everything is actually one, much like cells in your body are separate, but yet part of the same organ, which is also separate from other organs, but yet part of the same body, etc. Because as the principle of mentalism would state that we are part of the all. Everything is a mental construct and is consciousness. And in Star Wars, this is represented by the Force. But again, George Lucas also includes polarity in Star Wars by separating the Force into two halves, the dark side and the light side, the good versus evil. And the people that can master this Force, harness this power, are the magicians of Star Wars, known as the Jedi and the Sith. And I believe it may have been Luke's uncle who referred to Obi-Wan Kenobi as a crazy old wizard. And there may have even been some references to the Jedi being magic users, magicians in the latest Star Wars series, The Mandalorian, who get all their power from using the Force, manipulating what they've described as an energy field that surrounds everything. And this gives the Jedi certain powers, telekinesis, 
brief mind control, and incredible accuracy with lightsabers and other weapons, as in the case of Luke taking the shot that blew up the Death Star. But these are all theatrical powers there to make the movie more interesting. Most of the occult truths that are in the Star Wars saga are found in The Empire Strikes Back with Yoda teaching Luke. Do or do not. There is no try. You must unlearn what you have learned. And many axioms like that. I'm not sure where Lucas borrowed each one from, but I do know that Lucas pretty much borrowed everything that he included in the movies. Even the design for Chewbacca is said to not be his own. But these axioms are true nonetheless. That's why it resonates so well with people. Unlike the newer trilogy that doesn't resonate hardly at all. It's almost as if they didn't understand the Force and how it works. Oh, it's just telekinesis? Well, we'll just make it bigger telekinesis. We'll have Ray move more rocks than Luke could. And they left out all the underlining truths and hermetic principles that go along with it. They ditched the archetypes for characters who mostly didn't have anything to do. And they switched back and forth between directors and writers so that the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing and you just got a big jumbled mess. In short, they forgot what Star Wars was about. What made it such a big hit. And they approached it like they would any other movie when Star Wars just isn't any other movie. Now the first of the new trilogy, The Force Awakens, did the best, but that's essentially because they copied and pasted the original Star Wars, A New Hope. It's basically the same movie, except that, again, the original was better. In the original trilogy, they also had this idea of Luke needing to confront Vader. And in The Empire Strikes Back, Yoda didn't want him to rush off and confront Vader. He wanted him to stay and finish his training. But by Return of the Jedi, Yoda had made it the last part of his training, that he had to confront Vader in order for him to be a Jedi. And once again, this parallels Hermeticism. A lot of the training that we do in Hermetic Magic is to be able to confront and conquer our own demons. There was one part of Empire Strikes Back when Yoda sent Luke into the cave, and he had a vision of him confronting Vader, and he defeated him, but then the mask blew open and Luke saw his own face as Vader. Conquering your own demons and faults in order for you to become the best version of yourself is a large part of Hermeticism. Being able to confront your fears so that you may act in spite of them. Fear can be very paralyzing to where people don't want to act at all. Luke wanted to rush off and face Vader as part of the hero's journey to confront him. That is until he learned that he was his father and then he didn't want to kill him. In spite of everything that Darth Vader had done, Luke still had compassion for him. While they had planned to turn Luke to the dark side, Luke had planned to turn Vader to the light side. In spite of all the evil that he had done, Luke was offering him forgiveness. And we've talked about the importance of forgiveness on this channel and in my programs. There are so many powerful threads running through Star Wars. And the last one I want to talk about is one of the most profound ones for me personally. And that was in Return of the Jedi, when Luke spoke with Obi-Wan Kenobi's spirit. And Luke asked him, Ben, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me that Darth Vader was my father? And Ben Kenobi's like, well, what I told you was true from a certain point of view. <laughs> and Luke's like, a certain point of view? And Ben says, Luke, you're going to find that a number of the truths that we cling to rely solely upon our own point of view. And I used to think that was such a cop-out. And that's because I didn't understand it at the time. And that's because most people believe that there's an absolute truth. But as the Hermetic Principles say, that every truth is but a half-truth due to the law of polarity. And so your own personal truths are going to rely on your perspective. I mean, take politics, for example, Republicans and Democrats. Both sides say they're telling the truth. As they see it, the other side would swear up and down that they're lying. But they're merely telling the truth according to their own point of view. And this is why it's so important to understand the law of polarity. And this one scene has stuck with me ever since I've seen it. I didn't understand it at the time because I didn't understand the law of polarity. I didn't understand that every truth is but a half truth. But the reality is, is that everyone will see the truth through the lens of their own perspective. And it's one of the most profound occult truths in the Star Wars saga. 
Now, the prequels weren't really good for much, other than showing how the Emperor used the Law of Polarity to rise to power and take control. The Emperor played both sides off against one another, and he started a war in order to rise to power. Now, you don't have to start a galactic war in order to take advantage of the Law of Polarity, but it does illustrate just how powerful it can be when one remains neutral and depolarized while using polarity to their advantage. And the last archetype that Star Wars uses to its full effect is the redemption story. The entire Star Wars saga, minus the latest trilogy, is a redemption arc. It's the redemption of Anakin Skywalker. That no matter the evil that he's done, he can still come back to the side of good. And that resonates with people. And by Luke succeeding in turning his father back to the light side, Anakin was then able to destroy the Emperor once and for all. That is, until the latest movie where they had to rely on bringing characters back from the dead because they had nothing else to go on. Yeah, don't don't count the latest movies. But it's this redemption arc of Anakin Skywalker that the entire saga is really based around. And as far as the prequels were, it did have some really good moments. There's one in Revenge of the Sith, where Obi-Wan is telling Anakin that Chancellor Palpatine is evil. And Anakin says, from my view, the Jedi are evil. Right? There's that polarity again. There's that truth based upon your own perspective. And it's interesting because nobody who's evil ever believes that they're evil. They always believe that they're on the side of good. And of course, in the story of Star Wars, this leads Anakin to the dark side, where he becomes the ultimate authoritarian tyrant and does unspeakable things. Yet once he redeems himself at the end, we're happy for him. And it works. That his final act was to destroy the Emperor and save his son out of compassion for him. There's so much going on in Star Wars. The original trilogy is still one of the greatest trilogies of all time. But it's not just happenstance. George Lucas stacked the deck. He put a lot of archetypes and hermetic knowledge into the movies. And I'm hoping it's now there for you to see as well. Leave a like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Follow me on Twitter at Freighter Xavier. Visit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash mindandmagic. And check us out over at Patreon and Subscribestar where patrons get early access to videos like these. Thanks for all the love and support, and I'll see you next time. Take care.